Well, hello, everybody. It's good to welcome you to this session of the Oasis Borderless Cyber 2021 conference. And I think the previous session has, I hope, given you a very good impression of the breadth and depth of Oasis open work in the cybersecurity standards area. I think the OASIS CTITC has really blazed a trail regarding cybersecurity standards. And you know perhaps that the European Union, the EU, has officially recognized sticks and taxi for use by the public sector throughout Europe. Now, I work for OASIS as a consultant. I'm based in Europe, in Geneva, in Switzerland. I'm talking to you from my office at home today. And it was, I think, in, nine, in 2017 that I first met senior officials from ENISA, the European Union Cybersecurity Agency. And subsequently, I was privileged to visit ENISA in Athens, Greece, where it has its major office. And there I learned a lot more about ENISA's major roles. And I also participated in a conference in December or November 2018, organized by ENISA. And there I met um, many people from the cybersecurity community in Europe. Now, as you've heard, OASIS work in cybersecurity is expanding. I'd like specifically to mention the Open Cyber Alliance, which has been rather innovative, moving into open projects beyond standardization and trying to build an open ecosystem where products can interoperate without the need for customized integration and which could significantly enhance the cybersecurity environment. And earlier this year, we established the OASIS Open Europe Foundation based in the Netherlands in the heart of the EU with Dr. Martin Chapman of Oracle in the chair. Now he also represents OASIS in the ANISA Stakeholders Cybersecurity Certification Group. And through the new European Foundation, we hope to work on many European-based projects, including those relevant to the EU Cybersecurity Act, and hopefully to develop relations with ANISA. So it's my very great pleasure this, this morning, I guess, for most of you, this afternoon in Europe, it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Andreas Mitrakas, the Head of Market Certification and Standardization at ENISA. He'll be speaking to you from Athens in Greece, and he co-chairs the Stakeholder Cybersecurity Certification Group in ENISA. Prior to joining ENISA, Andreas served as General Counsel in Global Sign and as a senior counsel in Verizon. And he's a qualified lawyer. He holds a doctorate degree in law from Erasmus University of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And he also has degrees from the University of Portsmouth, um, Queen's University Belfast, and the University of Athens. So I pass to you, Andreas, and we very much look forward to hearing you Thank you very much. Uh, let me <laughs> roll it back. Um, I'm, at, right at this point, I, um, I say that um, uh, that was the part of the training on uh, video conference that I missed, unmuting yourself. So apologies for that. So I'm starting with an apology. Thank you, Carol, for the introduction. I found it a bit longish on the qualifications, but hopefully uh, our, uh, um, our listeners, um, the audience uh, is convinced uh, that uh, probably we know what we were going to talk about. <laughs> um, so let me share my screen. Um, uh, as uh, for, for, for a moment, if I, if I was able only to find the right um, application. 
um, strange. Uh, let me see. Oh, it doesn't allow me to do this. No, I can do that. Uh, can you see my screen now? Uh, it should be a presentation. Can you see that? Yes, yes, we can see it. Wonderful. So I just wonder why I cannot. I think now it works for you. Perfect. Great. Um, uh, so indeed, on um, uh, on uh, the, the background, uh, of course, um, uh, lies uh, the work of um, of uh, NISA as an agency of uh, the European Union in uh, the area of uh, cyber uh, security. Um, ANISA was um, uh, reformed and, uh, in a way, organizationally transformed um, um, not so long ago. Firstly, through the um, uh, legislative uh, act, uh, this um, uh, act that has become, become known as the uh, Cybersecurity Act. Uh, and secondly, because um, um, a new executive director uh, took over tasks about a year and a half ago, and uh, he has currently made enormous amount of effort uh, to um, match the um, uh, requirements uh, stemming from the Act uh, to the organization that supports the implementation. So that's the vision of uh, Johan de Passars. And uh, we've been working very hard <laughs> in uh, the past year or so to make it happen uh, as, as, it, as it stands. Uh, luckily, the um, EU member states are quite um, uh, supportive of uh, this uh, new um, or adapted um, uh, role for the agency. Um, and uh, that's quite important because in, um, in Europe, uh, differently from uh, what happens in a federalist um, system, like uh, the one that you have in the United States, uh, you really need the member states to support uh, policies if they have to uh, come up with meaningful um, uh, outcomes. Um, so, with this in mind, um, I just had uh, three um, uh, suggestions for the um, content of this presentation. I'll give you a wee bit of a background of uh, the agency, what it's all about, um, just to set the stage. And uh, then I will say a few words around um, uh, cybersecurity certification. Uh, because uh, alongside with um, standardization, it, it um, um, consists the bulk of uh, our activities in, uh, in this unit, but uh, it, it also represents uh, the um, um, significant opportunity that the agency has to uh, increase its uh, footprint on uh, standardization. And I'll say a couple of things about uh, where we're likely to go from, uh, from uh, here uh, in uh, the foreseeable uh, period. So, a NISA in the background is um, um, more like a, a think tank, or it started as a think tank, as a public sector consultancy, if somebody wants to be extremely vulgar about uh, uh, these things. Of course, it is a public administration, but it's uh, been um, uh, decentralized right from the beginning. And uh, effectively, it, was, it has been historically controlled by the member states through a very um, involved set of individuals that populate the management board. Uh, so here, in this case, the board is composed by people that are on, on the job in the member states, and uh, they are able to provide uh, sound uh, strategic uh, guidance to the agency. And that's what has happened in the past uh, uh, 15 years or so. Um, currently, the agency aims at uh, producing uh, out, uh, um, outputs effectively and hopefully also outcomes in uh, terms of operational cooperation, which is um, um, a, a term to describe uh, responses perhaps to cyber attacks and coordination in order to um, uh, prevent uh, them from happening. Uh, cybersecurity policy, which is a way to describe um, uh, the myriad of uh, policies that uh, have um, uh, cybersecurity significance at EU level. Uh, examples could be uh, anything from um, uh, secure um, uh, uh, shipping or electronic identities, um, the uh, network information security directive on critical that concerns critical infrastructures, um, important um, um, policy, analytical policy work uh, happens there. Capacity building, uh, which is very uh, significant because that's uh, probably the the uh, uh, the. Uh, the best analogy would be to put it as uh, uh, the, the Hollywood kind and the um, uh, Eurovision Song Contest uh, put together. So the Song Contest is all about uh, uh, the cybersecurity challenge where young people um, 
uh, compete uh, to exercise their skills uh, on uh, cybersecurity. Uh, and uh, the Hollywood um, uh, analogies around the, the large-scale exercises that involve uh, hundreds of organizations and thousands of people uh, from uh, all across the globe currently, um, so that uh, they can develop capabilities to cooperate and uh, uh, respond uh, if, uh, the, um, uh, if it's not a drill anymore, if a real life incident uh, happens. Alongside that, we get foresight, knowledge and um, uh, awareness uh, activities. And then we get trusted solutions. Now, trusted solutions, which is um, uh, our cup of tea, is um, uh, essentially um, the area where uh, standards and certification meet the market uh, needs. Now, market is pretty new. I'm not prepared to, uh, to talk uh, much about it today. But um, and this in terms of standardization looks uh, mainly at standardization gaps on cybersecurity. And uh, it um, um, uh, also uh, produces um, uh, analysis, um, uh, catalogs, and uh, anything that our stakeholders might need in, in this respect. We also animate the relationship with uh, standards organizations across Europe internationally. And then comes certification, um, which is the uh, important activity where we put together uh, the technical requirements so that um, uh, firstly the legislator and uh, uh, secondly the conformity assessment uh, bodies are able to um, to produce conformity assessment uh, reports so the Cybersecurity act on the background um, produced this model around the certification drawing experience from other areas of the economy um, those a bit more um, uh, seasoned among uh, among us might uh, uh, remember uh, the period of about 20 years ago actually it's a bit like almost 22 years ago when we had um, uh, the mad cow disease scan uh, across uh, Europe uh, so of course that was in a different area about uh, cattle and um, uh, um, animal feed and all that but with time it um, led to um, tightening the bolts in uh, the area of um, um, uh, risk, uh, quality, and um, effectively there was a certification uh, framework that was put uh, around it so that uh, the provenance of uh, uh, animal feed and um, uh, food stuff for humans uh, uh, could be ascertained. Now with this consumer protection um, uh, background in mind, uh, then the legislator moved on to uh, increasingly more areas and the, there, there came cyber uh, security. Um, so pressing societal needs, the ubiquity of technology, as we experienced it also through this uh, 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 trying um, uh, period with the pandemic, um, I, I think uh, a proof that um, uh, when we bring the consumer in, uh, in uh, en masse into the technology foreground, some additional measures have to be put together. There's public interest in it. And uh, this is where we stand. So I hope I did not uh, uh, skip uh, too many slides because, uh, uh, okay, probably my computer is not uh, that responsive today. Um, so, oh, I should have gone. One. Apologies for, for this. I'm just having a little uh, 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 slow computer. So anyway, um, so the, the, the schemes uh, essentially are what uh, the uh, agency, what ANISA is um, uh, producing in this um, uh, life cycle. Now, uh, the, the life cycle of a scheme um, essentially uh, is very easy to look it up if uh, you just uh, browse through this uh, cybersecurity act. And um, uh, effectively, it could be a very straightforward uh, line of business. But we did not uh, want to sit on our hands and just execute on uh, the legislative uh, provisions. We want to make something which was far more meaningful for our stakeholders. And um, uh, here comes this graph that on the inner circle, it um, uh, includes the various steps uh, that are described there uh, on uh, uh, the, on the legislation, the regulation. Uh, on uh, the light blue circle on the outside, it, uh, all these elements that the NISA has put together to improve the experience of uh, the stakeholders. 
So starting from this uh, acronym, the Union Rolling Work Program that you see somewhere in, uh, in the inner circle, um, uh, you we, we should expect to get uh, all the good ideas of all the policy areas that require uh, certification at some stage. Now, in response to that, ANISA is obliged uh, by law to set up ad hoc working groups composed by area experts who are able to advise the agency as to what uh, makes uh, good uh, security controls in each, uh, in each case. And you can think uh, very broadly because uh, currently we range from uh, common criteria to cloud services, but gosh, I mean, nobody knows what uh, the future will bring. I have a few clues for you. Uh, but it's going to be very diverse, so we need um, external experts to help us with that. Then um, comes approval by the um, uh, or a, a positive uh, nod uh, by the member states, then comes voting by the member states, and then we enter into a monitoring and maintenance phase for each uh, scheme individually. Now, alongside that, we thought that uh, we would need to start um, a scheme by looking into the threat and risk assessment um, uh, uh, level, so threat analysis and the risk assessment for each application area uh, for the purpose of determining the assurance level. So we're not looking into carrying out generic risk assessments in a policy application area, but determine the assurance levels that we want to, to achieve. And uh, effectively, under this, uh, this act, we have uh, three grand levels. Uh, we have uh, um, um, uh, basic, substantial, and high, uh, but uh, no guidance as to how that all happens. So we've developed a methodology about that. Then we pursue st uh, proactively stakeholders' involvement by bringing the area experts, the ad hoc working group people, with the member state representatives, the, the, you know, the good experts that work for the governments across Europe. So this way, firstly, we cut in time, and uh, then we get more and better ideas put together so that when we produce a scheme, it's more robust. Alongside that, we've developed the concept of user guidance right from the beginning. So we don't expect the scheme to be um, voted, adopted, and then launch uh, guidance activities. We start right from the draft. And then, of course, we will adapt accordingly, and that's a continuous activity. Sometimes we use little pilots, so we uh, throw a draft to the direction of the conformity assessment body uh, that is prepared to help us, and uh, we ask them to take a look and tell us what they think, honestly. And um, honestly, they do. So the good news is that this way we can improve already the, um, uh, our initial thoughts with um, uh, better ideas that actually work at the conformity assessment level. And of course, we have uh, more uh, concepts about uh, measuring the performance of the schemes, only that we have not uh, put the, those in practice for the simple reason that uh, uh, we're still waiting on the adoption of the first uh, scheme as, as it stands. Now, alongside certification, we have also standardization to think about. And uh, uh, last year, the agency produced a little strategy as to how to move uh, forward in the next few years. The key point uh, is the following. Historically, and this has been um, involved in standardization at the European level, as you would expect, and uh, uh, slightly so at the international level, mostly ISO and IEC. But there came the point in time when ANISA had to also open up to uh, private uh, initiatives, standardization initiatives. This came, of course, as uh, the logical um, uh, outcome of um, uh, the uh, request to produce a certification scheme on 5G. And uh, the key, the leader um, authority on uh, standardization in this area, of course, a private association, the GSM association, uh, with which uh, we are seeking to proactively to develop um, a, a positive um, uh, experience, a positive relationship um, in, in order to produce uh, these uh, schemes. Uh, with the least um, intrusion and disturb, uh, disturbance for, for the industry as it is, and with the highest benefit for the general public, uh, representing public interest. So we cooperate with um, uh, key stakeholders in this area to develop uh, standards. We produce uh, standardization gap uh, reports, very targeted ones. Um, we seek to influence uh, the thinking of key stakeholders around cyber uh, security. Um, and we look also into the implementation uh, phase uh, quite uh, uh, frequently. Um, 
we liaise, uh, of course, we have developed relations with uh, the European uh, standards organizations. Um, and uh, um, of course, we have experts of expert pools in order to help us uh, when uh, things become too thick and we need external advice uh, in, uh, in uh, these areas. So there you go, a more involved and more uh, far reaching uh, relationship with uh, standards. How does that all play out in terms of uh, the schemes that ENISA produces? ENISA currently uh, has uh, processed the requests on um, a scheme concerning uh, common criteria. Uh, for those of you that uh, follow this area, of course, um, uh, common uh, criteria are subjected to uh, an agreement, international agreement, um, with um, uh, tens of uh, signatories. Um, the background of it is um, uh, dating back uh, about uh, 30 years or so, a little bit less. Um, and it was a landmark area of international cooperation for, for a very long period. In Europe, but not in the EU, so not under the EU treaty, in Europe, um, the Common Criteria Agreement was um, uh, followed up through uh, um, um, intergovernmental cooperation framework uh, uh, dubbed under the acronym SOGA, yes. As uh, you can see, that uh, uh, was a mutual recognition agreement. And as uh, uh, you can imagine, uh, that meant that if uh, anybody passed um, conformity assessment in uh, country A, for instance, Sweden, uh, the ensuing certificate would be recognized without any further um, uh, requirements in uh, another country, for instance, in Germany. And that was a wonderful model that worked for many, many years, for almost two and a half de 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 decades. Um, but the volume and the pace of things was such that uh, this intergovernmental approach uh, would not uh, pay dividends anymore. And that uh, led to the um, uh, concept behind uh, the certification provision on the Cybersecurity Act that I mentioned already. Uh, so currently, the, the scheme looks into um, following the pattern of uh, so the SOGA AS mutual recognition agreement in terms of security properties. Um, so there are um, um, uh, considerations around the, the level of um, uh, certification. Uh, it follows the pattern um, uh, laid out uh, uh, in uh, common criteria, so the other one, um, um, approach is uh, fully um, respected. Uh, high levels, of course, of uh, certification um, uh, indicated by uh, more stringent uh, requirements. Um, and, uh, of course, high levels uh, would require authorization for both the certification bodies and the body and uh, the testing laboratories. Further improvements were introduced in line with the CSA because there are some formal requirements on the regulation that uh, uh, were not uh, previously foreseen in the mutual recognition agreements. Uh, for instance, the maximum validity period has been um, uh, introduced and revised. Um, then uh, assurance continuity, vulnerability handling, patch management and the like. Further on, uh, there were considerations around the improvements to the market conditions for general purpose ICT products. Uh, that was uh, substantiated by the assurance level substantial, um, allowing private conformity assessment bodies to cover most of uh, the requirements. Um, and uh, then uh, there, was, uh, there were definitions um, concerning the conditions of the promotion of the certified products, uh, most notably through a label and the QR code. And this year, Anissa is uh, already working on a concept for uh, a label uh, that would be, of course, a visual prompt, uh, but it will also include some additional features, um, uh, probably a QR code. Uh, it would be um, it, it would be validated online and uh, so on and so forth, uh, so that uh, we start bu building a web of trust around uh, these uh, uh, certified products and services across the EU and beyond. Then. Um, uh, in a neighboring area and in relation to um, a draft candidate uh, scheme on cloud services, things um, uh, are equally um, uh, progressing well. Uh, however, of course, due to a time lag, because firstly the agency received and processed the common criteria request, 
the common criteria request is currently, uh, as I mentioned, pending um, adoption. Um, and uh, but in uh, in the cloud services area, we are uh, one step behind, uh, looking into Q4 for the completion of uh, of uh, the draft. Uh, the work uh, around um, um, cloud services started from a different premise. The uh, our stakeholders could not offer uh, or share the same amount of uh, involvement and past experience as it was the case in uh, uh, common criteria. Um, but again, we started from uh, the threat environment, the definition of the cloud services as such, and an understanding of who the potential customers are what the capabilities of these customers might be, what could be the role of um, a trusted third party, an auditor, um, which uh, layers and types of services um, uh, should be subjected to um, uh, an audit and uh, what it would mean to gain, uh, to get a certificate in the end of, uh, of uh, the line. And also some additional requirements and expectations like comparability and so on. So let me see if I can move on to the next slide because I'm sensing a bit of a lag. Come on, on the computer. Ah, there it is. So key properties included um, resistance and resilience, uh, resistance to incoming um, uh, attacks, uh, priorities on um, uh, products and focus on products uh, themselves and uh, resilience related to how the attack is uh, handled. <clears throat> priority on services and focus on vendors uh, uh, pr processes, considering also security uh, feature. Um, so here, uh, the, the, we just try to give a very broad uh, span across uh, these uh, notions in a way that uh, we can accommodate as many service providers as, uh, as uh, possible. Now, in terms of service providers, uh, one should not be alarmed because the scheme itself does not uh, look so much at uh, the uh, very basic uh, levels of uh, the cloud uh, stack. Uh, it mostly focuses on uh, the top end uh, uh, services as they delivered uh, because, uh, and, and actually, it uh, could um, be seen as a scheme concerning uh, mostly added value services uh, that could uh, proliferate across uh, the European Union and elsewhere, of course, uh, without um, uh, upsetting or altering the um, provisions of um, the large-scale suppliers, the whole scale, the wholesale suppliers, uh, uh, hyperscalers, and all that. And uh, of course, this is not uh, working in um, uh, isolation, splendid or otherwise. Um, essentially, uh, we're looking into supply chain uh, issues and complementarity. Uh, we want these provisions to be meaningful for uh, the entire stack of uh, services as it, it uh, proliferates. Uh, and it will remain updated, of course, as, uh, as uh, the time goes. Um, uh, we also see um, uh, a future where the different um, uh, cybersecurity certification schemes will um, um, feed into each other. And uh, for instance, you will have in the future um, devices that are certified on the UCC scheme, running services that are um, uh, certified on the UCS scheme and being accessed, for instance, by uh, uh, 5G services that uh, also have, uh, to a certain degree, uh, an EU um, certification designation. Uh, so we're looking into an ecosystem, as you can imagine, that uh, would better accommodate uh, the expectations of our uh, stakeholders, uh, public and private alike. In terms of next steps, because uh, looking into <clears throat> um, uh, the future is, uh, of course, the easiest thing to do, except of uh, looking at the, the rear view mirror, <laughs> that also gives uh, the benefit of uh, certainty. Um, we are looking into a risk-based approach. I mentioned uh, that uh, the agency has produced a methodology in uh, this respect. We have not published it yet, but uh, during summer, in the next uh, couple of months, uh, this um, uh, will happen. Uh, we've also run uh, a pilot on 5G on the basis of this methodology to determine um, uh, discrete uh, assurance levels, uh, depending on uh, uh, the risk appetite and uh, the um, uh, assurance level pursued by the, um, uh, the vendors. 
Um, and uh, we have um, uh, this uh, two-layered uh, approach starting from um, uh, business and market uh, consideration and moving into the assessments with um, uh, improvement uh, proposals in order to meet the targets concerning assurance levels. Andreas, can I say yes. just two more minutes, please? Two more minutes, yes. This is my penultimate slide. So probably uh, doing um, uh, OK for the moment. Um, and uh, clearly, this uh, uh, part of the work will be published with a view to involve uh, stakeholders uh, in an uh, iterative uh, way and again, uh, broader view. And this is my last slide. Uh, so that's the probably the eggs of um, uh, wisdom, all the new innovative ideas there, uh, with potential candidates uh, for possible uh, cybersecurity certification schemes, as it might happen. So I can assure you that uh, the uh, European Union has produced uh, the final draft of the Union Drawing Work Program that talks about the um, uh, schemes of the future. Only that um, uh, this um, um, plan has not been published yet, as there are some probably additional policy areas that need to be uh, brought together before uh, that happens. But on the outset, I mean, looking into the policy areas that are impacted by certification, uh, clearly we have a, a mandate on uh, mobile services, uh, services uh, around 5G. And then there, you might have seen the legislative initiatives around the artificial intelligence, uh, the digital um, uh, identification uh, wallets, and uh, so on and so forth in uh, terms of um, mobility and, um, and the other areas in critical infrastructure. So at this stage, I would like to thank you for your attention. I will stop uh, sharing my screen for the moment. And um, I'm uh, totally available for your questions. Thank you. Ah, I got beautiful questions waiting for me. Thank you, Andreas. That was really, for me, absolutely fascinating. I, I sincerely hope the audience also found it as useful. Um, we have a question from Mr. Duncan Sparrow, and he asks, he refers to the US government's actions regarding software bills and materials and asks if ANISA is specifying anything at the moment with regard to so-called S-bombs. Um, look, uh, that's, um, um, it, it's, it's a good question. And the simple answer is uh, uh, um, no, unfortunately, ANISA has not moved uh, proactively in this area. Um, but we've done something uh, that uh, might point uh, to our general interest on uh, software development, secure software development. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, um, we issued a report around uh, that. So this is the uh, part of uh, NISA's job that is uh, more analytical and um, forthcoming with the recommendations. That's the type of work that NISA has been known about uh, in the past uh, years. Um, and um, uh, I should also imagine that um, uh, sooner rather than later, the uh, secure software development might come under the focus of certification. And if it did happen, um, uh, probably a good way to approach it would be on uh, the basis of um, um, a process-based approach. Uh, but no, um, uh, software bills of materials are not um, uh, available at uh, the EU uh, level just yet. Well, thank you very much for that clarification. I regret, I think we have to terminate the session now because the system is wanting to get on to the next um, speaker as ever thus. But thank you again, Andreas. It was extremely interesting to hear about how ENISA has evolved, developed, and your plans for the future. And I, for one, will come back to you on your foresight role. I'm extremely interested in that area. So thank you, Andreas Matrakas from Anissa in Athens for your excellent contribution to the Oasis Borderless Cyber Meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Oasis, and thank you to the audience.